Hello! This week we will perform experiment on vectors. For many physical quantities, the direction of a quantity is just as important as it is its uh, magnitude. So vector is a quantity that requires specification on both magnitude and direction, while the scalars, they only have a magnitude. Examples for scalars are mass or temperature, and examples for vectors are displacement, velocity, force, or acceleration. You will work with force vectors, but the methods you will learn apply to any vector. Purpose of this experiment is to learn different methods of vector addition. So a vector is a straight line with arrowhead on the end. Length of this line represents the magnitude of the vector, while the arrowhead here represents the direction. So if you have given vector A and vector B, and you wish to add them together, you need to remember one important thing. In order to add these vectors, you can move them around translatory, either this way or this way, but you cannot rotate them. So the first method we are going to use to add vectors is a polygon method. This means that you will take vector A, draw it here, and then this vector B you will move translatory here. Notice that the direction of vector B is the same as it is given initially. So you will just draw vector B here, starting at the end of the vector A, and then your resultant will be from the beginning of vector A to the end of the vector B, and then direction of your resultant goes always towards the last vector that you added. Now if you have three vectors, vector A, B, R, and C, and you wish to add them together using polygon method, you're going to simply add vector A, on the end of the vector A, move vector B, and then when vector C, Notice that the direction of each of these vectors is the same as initially when you started. Now the vector r, the res resultant that is a sum of these three vectors, is a this vector here that starts at the beginning of vector a and ends at the end of vector c. The another method to add vectors is a parallelogram method. So again, we are back to vector a and vector B. So first you start by drawing the coordinate system, then vector A here. So the direction of vector A that's given initially should be exactly same here, and then the, that direction is usually represented with the angle that this vector A takes from the positive x-axis counterclockwise. Then vector B here, in the same direction as the original vector, and then construct parallelogram. Now your resultant will be a longer diagonal. Again, the direction of the resultant or vector B can be given also by the angle that these vectors take from the positive x-axis counterclockwise. The third and more precise method for adding vectors is a analytical method. So now we have, again, vector A. The direction is this, of this vector A is given by the angle theta. And in physics, we always, me always measure angles from the positive x-axis counterclockwise. Okay? So now we can find the components, x-component and y-component of this vector A. That is a length of this line and this line here. So the x-component of this vector is going to be A times cosine theta where a is the magnitude of your vector, and then this is a cosine of the angle that vector takes from the positive x-axis counterclockwise. Similarly, the y component of this vector is given by this equation. Now, to find the resultant in x direction, x component of your resultant is going to be a sum of the x components of your individual vectors. The y component of the resultant is going to be sum of the y components of the vectors. So now to find the magnitude of the resultant, you're simply going to take a square root of the sum of the squared components. Notice here that the magnitude of a vector is always going to be a positive number. 
And the reason for that is because when you square a number, you're going to get a positive number. When you add another positive number to that one, you're going to get again positive number. And then when you take a square root, again, the resultant will be a positive. Now to find the direction of your resultant, that uh, you're going to use this equation. Theta is equal inverse tangent ry over rx. Now, when you plug the numbers to your calculator, you're going to get a value for the angle that may not actually be the angle that your resultant takes with a positive x-axis. Reason for that is, if you look here, the tangent of the angles in the first quadrant is going to be equal to the tangent of the angles in the third quadrant, and then similarly second and fourth. So the best way to actually make sure that your direction of your resultant vector is a properly calculated is to remember this. If the angle is going from 0 to 90 degrees, then both x and y components will be positive. If the angle is from 90 to 180 degrees, then x component is negative, y component is positive. In third quadrant, the angle is from 180 to 270 degrees, both components are negative, and then in the fourth quadrant, from 270 degrees to 360 degrees, x component is positive and y component is negative. Once you remember this, you're always going to be able to find appropriate value for the direction of your resultant vector. Now, the another vector that we are going to use in our lab this week is the equilibrium vector. That is a vector that has the same magnitude as a resultant vector, but it is in opposite direction. So this equilibrium vector actually produces equilibrium between two or three vectors. So for instance, if we have this vector A here, and let's say this vector is long uh, 5 centimeters, and it takes the angle, it takes, and direction of this vector is 45 degrees from the positive x-axis, then your equilibrium vector will go 5 centimeters long in this direction, and then the angle that it takes with with respect of the positive x-axis is going to be 45 degrees up to here and then plus 180 degrees. We will talk about this a little bit more in our example. So now let's look how this experiment actually uh, will work. So for this particular experiment we are going to have a 15 gram mass, 35, 30 grams mass and 45 gram mass at angles of 22 degrees, 68, and 134 degrees. Again, these are only examples. Your TA will actually give you masses and angles which you are going to use for this experiment. Next step is to calculate the forces. Since you're applying masses on the force table, the only acceleration acting on your system is going to be gravitational acceleration, so your forces will be mass times, the gra times g. So you can calculate force 1, force 2, and force 3. Now, notice one thing. Notice that m2 is twice m1, and that m3 is 3 times m3. Of course, you have to convert these to kilograms. So now, you're going to use different methods to add 2 or 3 vectors. First, you're going to choose any 2 vectors and use parallelogram method to add them. For this example, I chose vector f1 and f2. So you're going to use a graph paper. So first, before you get started, you have to decide a scale. Reason for deciding which scale you're going to use is because these vectors are really small. They have a small magnitudes, right? So it is going to be really hard to draw 0.147 centimeters or millimeters or whatever. So the scale I decided to use here is 3 centimeters for the smallest vector. And now since I know that my vector 2 is twice as vector 1 and that my vector 3 is 3 times as vector 1, I can simply use for vector 1 3 centimeters, for vector 2 is going to be 6 centimeters long line, and then vector 3 is going to be a 9 centimeters long line. So let's start. First you construct a coordinate system, then you're going to draw 
a 3 cm long line that's going to take 22 degrees from the positive x-axis. Then you're going to draw vector 2, which is a 6 cm long line that will take 68 degrees from the positive x-axis. Finish your parallelogram and then your resultant will be this vector here, your longer diagonal. So now to find the magnitude and direction of your resultant, simply you're going to use the ruler and then measure the length of this vector and I got that to be 8.4 centimeters. Now use your scale and convert centimeters to newtons and I'm going to get that my r is 0.42 newtons and then dividing that by 9.80 I'm going to get that I need to apply 42 grams to my force table in order to get the resultant. Simply use a protector and measure the angle that resultant takes with a positive x-axis and that is going to be a 53 degrees. Now your equilibrium vector is going to be you simply just prolong the resultant vector to this end, same length and then opposite direction, right? So the direction is going to be in this, this way. Angle that resultant vector takes from the positive x-axis counterclockwise is going to be 53 degrees up to the resultant, right? And then plus 180 degrees here, so that's going to be 233 degrees. The next step of this experiment is to use the graph you obtained in step 2 and then um, check if your calculation is correct. Uh, later on I will show you a video how to check this. So the next step here is to use a polygon method and add all, th all three vectors together. So remember, we set the scale. So the magnitude of the smallest vector is 3 centimeters. So you're going to draw 3 centimeters that takes 22 degrees from the positive x-axis. Then you set the coordinate system here. We will have 6 centimeters long line that takes 68 degrees with the positive x-axis and then on the tip of F2 you're going to draw F3 which is going to be a 9 centimeters long line and then again set the coordinate system here and then measure 134 degrees uh, from the positive x-axis. Then your resultant vector is going to be simply connecting the beginning of the first vector to the end of the last vector. And then to get the equilibrium vector, you're just going to draw the same length line, just in opposite direction. Again, same as before, use a protector, measure the angle that this resultant takes with a positive x-axis, and that's going to be a 95 degrees. Measure the length of your resultant. For this example, I measured 13.2 centimeters, which converts to 0.647 newtons, and that's equal to 65.9 grams. The angle of my equilibrium vector, the direction of my equilibrium vector is simply going to be a, my resultant direction plus 180 degrees and that's 275 degrees. Again, you're going to check this on the force table and I will show you this in a couple of seconds. So the last step of this experiment is actually to add all these three vectors using an analytical method. And we already said that analytical method is more correct than graphical method because these devices that you're using, rulers and protectors, they don't have a same precision as, let's say, your calculator. So you're going to find the components, x components of your vectors, f1, f2, and f3. And then you're going to find the y components of your vectors. Then find x component of your resultant by adding these 3x components, and then y components of component of your resultant by adding these three numbers. Now you're going to find the magnitude of your resultant vector using the equation. And then you're going to find a direction of your resultant. It's going to be inverse tangent ry or rx. So when, when I plug this into the calculator, I got negative 85 degrees. But now let's see. My y component is positive, my x component is negative. That means that my vector, my resultant vector, has the direction into a second quadrant, right? It's negative 85 degrees translates to a 95 degrees. 
Now I will show you a video on how to use a force table on your station. You have a ring that is connected via threads to a mass hangers across these four pulleys. This line here at the middle of the pulley indicates the angle. So you would align for the vector 1 at 22 degrees. Now add masses for vector 1 and vector 2. Remember mass hanger is 5 grams. If you are adding two vectors you have to remove fourth pulley. Just place it on the table. Now for the equilibrium vector we found that we need to add a 42 grams at 233 degrees. Set the pulley at 233. Add 35 grams to a 5 gram mass hanger. That makes 40 grams. Check if this ring is centered. If it is not, you should add some paper clips. Now check again. Make sure that these threads are as straight as possible. Now we are centered. Now count the mass. 40 grams plus the mass of the paper clips. This concludes a demo on vector addition. Thank you.